stocks uh, under our lens today are all high debt companies. Varinda Bansal and Anuj Singhal join us to help us assess the risk versus the reward in these companies and to take us through the financials. Varinda, let's come across to you first. Is it worth buying into these high debt companies? Well, you know, uh, the way we have structured this uh, entire thing, I think Anuj will start with this, okay? Yeah, I mean, uh, look, uh, let's uh, look at some of these companies in terms of how many of these are gold mines and how many of these are land mines. We are focusing on four companies, uh, GBK Power, ABG Shipyard, uh, Videocon is the third one that we are focusing on, and of course, JP Infra. Now, the market has given different verdict in all of them, but uh, let's let's start, Varinda. You have done some research on GVK Power. Uh, now, what's interesting with GVK Power is that we all know that, uh, you know, uh, the asset monetization has been clearly one of the aspects of GVK. But first, give us some numbers. You know, well, before I start, I'll just tell you, you know, please, for all these retail investors who don't understand this, don't only see the market cap of any company. It's also important to see the enterprise value. What is enterprise value? It's the market cap plus debt what these companies own minus cash is, is if they have a, so don't go by theories of what people are telling you okay, you know the market cap of these companies is only 100 crores what else will this company lose the debt is very very important because when you buy an equity you also buy debt along with it uh, so the enterprise value is the most important thing and that is what we are focusing here right now as you said Anuj for GVK the market cap is nearly 1350 crores the enterprise value for this company is nearly 18 and a half thousand crores just look at the numbers okay for FY17 consolidated they made an bit of nearly 1150 1160 crores but the finance cost was 1900 crores so you can imagine that this company uh, the EBITDA was not e able to even cover the finance cost of the company yeah. what, what, what's the debt on the book I think it's 25,000 crores right you know, the GBK. enterprise value you have to deduct the cash the okay. investments what they have so it comes okay. to around 18 and a half thousand crores mm -hmm. uh, the net loss reported by this company was nearly 1300 crores mm -hmm. the important thing is that it's not only if by 17 on a consolidated basis but the chart will come on your screen for the last few years since last three years itself the finance cost is much much higher than the EBITDA are reported by the company which is not a good thing and also the finance cost each and every year has been increasing mm. Anuj it was around 1400 crores in FY15 yeah. 1650 crores you know on FY16 and then uh, going to 1900 crores so the finance cost is moving up year and year mm. the important thing is that it's not able to cover the the the, the EBITDA. EBITDA is not able to cover the finance cost which is there so these things have of course led to all the disruption in GVK and that is why GVK was trading around six seven rupees uh, but the important question, I think, Anuj, you were also asking me, you know, that what could be the value of the assets, what is pending mm. with them? Uh, you know, remember, they already sold the Bangalore airport. They hold nearly 50% stake in the Bangalore, uh, the Mumbai airport. They are bid for Navi Mumbai airport. You know, the Bangalore airport got a valuation of 12 and a half thousand crores. Mumbai, you know, people are talking about 15 to 20,000 crores. Even if you take 20,000 crores, 50% mm. stake is 10,000 crores, okay? Mm. 10,000 crores and still they have a you know, debt of nearly yeah. 18,000 crores. So, you know, will that suffice even if they sell that property the the cash cow will that suffice suffice or not it's difficult to say that uh, okay. you know if you do the calculation of the hancock asset the, mm. the the gas power assets it doesn't come to be anywhere between 1500 to 2000 mm. roads so even these assets are not educated sure. in order to provide and why will you set your cash cow you know and what will you have for the earnings for this company so the picture is not that clear Yes, GVK has some assets. Mumbai one is the real good, but they have a debt which is much sure. higher than these investments. Also, keep in mind, you know, for GVK, uh, I mean, it's not uh, it's not going to be easy because already with the airport, the, there's a bit of a litigation with the with the land surrounding it in terms of uh, you know what they're having with HDIL. Also, you know, with both G GMR and GVK, the consolidated debt at times gives a slightly misleading picture because uh, you know uh, under the new uh, rules, uh, you know you don't take into account the debt where you don't have 51% holding yes. and in certain cases they have just pared down their holding below 51%. So that's GVK power. Uh, I think let's move to the one which actually is quite uh, exciting for me uh, is uh, <laughs> JP Infra because you know uh, uh, I, I mean uh, I belong to Delhi and in the past you know I've gone to the the highways there the expressways uh, beautiful assets but of course uh, the company under a lot of debt JP Infra is something that we're talking about right now Varinder. You know again you know to, to give the credit to the JP group they have intended to reduce debt uh, but we are focusing on JP Infra market cap of 2400 crores the enterprise value is nearly 13,000 crores for this company again please understand enterprise value has debt into it and that's the important value what you pay when you buy a company importantly the numbers FY17 consolidated numbers on your screen EBITDA was negative 386 crores finance cost 900 crores so you can imagine if you are paying 900 crores as a company the EBITDA is in the negative digit uh, look at the last 
two years, FY16 and FY15. FY15 also, the company finance cost was 1,000 crores, 1,000 crores, and the EBITDA was only 582 crores. So again, it does not even cover half of, EBITDA doesn't cover half of what the finance cost is. These were brutal years for JP Infra and the JP Group. In the last two years, the only good thing is that they have reduced debt, and hence the finance cost has come down from 1,056 crores to 900 mm -hmm. crores. The important question, Anuj, again, what are they having? You know, JP Infra is a real estate company, you know, yeah. a clear real estate company. They have nearly, what, 6,000 acres of land, which is there, the Yamuna Express Highway, what you mentioned, Anuj. You know, people have to value that asset. Someone say 15,000 crores, someone say 20,000 crores, no one had, has this value. But the again problem for me is that, you know, that if you want to buy, you know, a company, a real estate company, only on the basis of land parcel, what they have, why go for you know, a company with huge, huge debt? There are companies, I can tell you, Anuj, many, many companies sitting you know, in Delhi or elsewhere, yeah. clean balance sheet, no debt, having huge, huge land but assets. That is, where, you know, that, is, that is where the risk reward comes in, right? Exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, you're taking a risk. So, I mean, of course, this is no recommendation, but that's, that's the risk that you're taking. Also, you know, the point here is that uh, the, the, the land that they have, uh, Aligarh and Agra, and they have a concession agreement of 25 years going for them. So, I think that that parcel is quite secure over there. And I think that's what the stock market has also told you over the last three or four weeks, the way JP Infratech stock has run up over the last two or three You know, weeks. I agree with that, but you know, the numbers haven't come. They have this land parcel with them since last three, four, five years. Mm. If you look at the numbers, you know, the numbers doesn't speak the same story. You know, companies like BFE, they're sitting on huge, that Mangalore, mm. you know, uh, land. But nothing has come out of them. Of course, they are into litigation and all. But again, the risk reward is everywhere. But you know, the, the debt portion is, is a more... Uh, you know, it's more uncomfortable than the earnings coming in from the company. Which is, which is what, what, was, what was interesting because we, we didn't get clarity from Manoj Gore when we spoke about it, when the, the deal happened, that whether JP Infratech was part of that or not. Uh, because, you know, the kind of assets that JP Infratech has, uh, there's a good chance that, uh, uh, you know, that there could be uh, some buyer in particular for JP Infratech as a company. So that's something, I think, uh, which will be interesting going forward. But, you know, now let's discuss uh, yes. companies where... Honestly, the retail investors should stay miles away from. Uh, uh, let's start with uh, Videocon or ABG. Which one do you want to start I'll start with, with ABG, okay? And again, uh, the, the first thing which I want to explain, which I started with, was the market cap enterprise value. Look at this company with a market cap of only 80 crores, but the enterprise value for this company is nearly 10,500 crores. Why? Because of huge, huge debt. Hence, I told you, you know, there's a huge difference between debt and enterprise value. Always look at the enterprise value. Now, look at this company, okay? This company has not reported results for the last two quarters. You know, the, the numbers which are on the standalone basis for the last, uh, you know, for the six months, FY17, revenue of only four and a half crores, only yeah. four and a half mm. crores, net loss of 1170 crores for ABG mm. Shipyard. Uh, you know, look at the, you know, uh, look at the six months EBITDA minus 564, yeah. five crores, finance cost of 570 crores. Also, importantly, if you go back and you have to see annual reports because of the consolidated numbers for the last three years. For FY16 annual report, they haven't even disclosed the consolidated numbers. In the annual report itself, they say that the financial results of all other subsidiaries and joint ventures are not consolidated because of their unavailability. This is what they're telling us. You know, in the month of July 2017, for FY16 consolidated numbers. You know, these is are these are. Trading, no, is it still trading? It is. It is trading. Today is a board meeting as well to discuss okay. the financial numbers of uh, FY17. Okay. But these numbers, if you just see, you know, with mm -hmm. a revenue of only four and a half crores on a standalone basis. FY16, uh, you know, annual report doesn't even give us the consolidated numbers. Please stay away from this. You know, there yeah. are talks about that the company will sell out, which we have been hearing from last, you know, six sure. months, one year. Every name in the in the in the Indian corporate have been pushed. You know, in terms of uh, ABG, yeah. the people, the company may be sold out to that. Until and unless something comes away from that, it, it is very risky. And also importantly, please remember that if even if something happens in t in terms of them selling the asset. The first right remains with the with banks, the, with not the, the banks, equity yes. shareholders. In fact, you know what? Just to put things uh, simply, ABG Shipyard, even if the uh, you know uh, stock goes up ten times from here, uh, it's not going to change enterprise value, and you know it can easily become zero. It should become zero. I mean, that's the that's the sense you get looking at uh, ABG Shipyard, and that's where the warning comes from. That uh, really should not be uh, looking at this stock at all. And Almost similar category would be Videocon, right? I mean, uh, it's a company which is flattered to deceive, or do you have slightly different views? You know, honestly, I had some hopes because of the assets what this company has two or three years back. Uh, but I'll give you the story again. You know, the market cap nearly 700 crores. You know, FY15 consolidated borrowings nearly 47,000 crores. It's not a small company. The debt on the company is very, very, very huge. Uh, the annual report for, you know, FY16, 17 was not there. EBITDA reported by the company for 15 months is, as they say, on a standalone basis is 1,070. 
37 crores. Look at the finance cost, nearly 3100 finance cost, which is nearly three times of EBITDA. So EBITDA can't even cover anything, one third of what uh, the, the finance cost is. The net loss reported by the company was 1900 crores. I know you remember in 2014, they sold an asset, the, the Brazilian oil where, asset for two and BPCL also had a stake. And exactly. you know, we all thought that, uh, you know, it's going to re-rate the stock. Exactly. But it only de-rated the stock. And you know, but the, the very simple reason for that is that, and here is clearly one example where you really have to, you know, go and inquire, launch an inquiry into the kind of loan that was given to Videocon, whether there was any siphoning off uh, by promoters, that's something clearly which has to be investigated. I mean, this Videocon clearly is a prime example you know, of if there's any go going to be any kind of investigation. This sold that asset 10% stake for two and a half billion dollars. And I remember, you know, the management coming in saying that the debt will reduce by 10%. Mm. So I wanted to go back in FY14 and 15 just see to that the debt has come down or not. So the numbers, which the numbers which tell us is that for FY14 consolidated borrowing was 45,000 crores. That is the year when they sold that 10% uh, asset. And in FY15, the consolidated borrowings actually went up to 47 and a half thousand crores. Yeah. So the consolidated actually moved higher actually even moved after higher. selling two and a half exactly. thousand, two and a half and billion dollar asset. So, you know, this is not good sign. This is not good. And, you know, the what that deal actually re-rated BPCL. And it, you know, uh, led to de-rating of Videocon. What happened? So, clearly, a clear case of investigation. But uh, uh, thanks, Marinda, for doing all this research. And what? once again, a warning sign uh, to all the retail investors watching this. Do your own research. Uh, and, of course, uh, uh, stay away from some of these. Uh, you want to take a punt in a couple of these. Uh, Got to be careful. You know, one last thing from my side, you know, why do you buy a company? Why do you buy a stock? You buy only for growth. You don't buy for survival. Some of these companies are fighting for survival. They are not into growth. Find a company where there is growth, okay? Please see the the, the numbers, the borrowings for these companies very, very carefully. And, uh, you know, it goes good till it's good. But otherwise, you know, it could be very, very bad sometimes. Okay, boys, thank you very much for that. Very informative.